This is my Canon GL2 camcorder. This will not be a full review because I've only had it for a few days now and I'm still learning how to use it. But I did record some test footage using it, mostly experimenting with the different controls and seeing what they do. So I figured I might as well upload it. I got this on eBay because this model is finally starting to get more affordable than it used to be. And it came with a carrying bag and a whole bunch of accessories which I'll show in the video. This is a mini DV tape camcorder. It does have an SD card slot but that's only for taking still photos. For video you can only record it to tape. This model was introduced in 2002 and it was in production until at least 2009. As you can see right there it has a 3 CCD image sensor. So it's widely regarded as one of the best standard definition camcorders ever made, at least in its price range. Canon had a fancier model based on the same electronics called the XL2, which had a bigger lens and more advanced audio features. Well, this was more of a camcorder for people who do wedding videos and for schools and low budget TV production and things like that. You can even see it has a little audio meter on the side there, which is not the most convenient location, but it is also repeated on the LCD itself. This is in 16x9 mode, but you can see it's squishing it down to 4x3, but it is recording a proper widescreen image on the tape. And you also get a color viewfinder. There you can see the viewfinder. And it does pull out and tilt up. And they had two different sizes of the eye piece here. This is the smaller one. They also had a larger one intended for use with people who wear eyeglasses. But this is the smaller one. There you can see the audio level controls, which you will hear me experimenting with in the test recordings I made. And you can also switch between automatic and manual level control. And over here are the inputs for external microphone and headphones. And under this flap are your AV inputs and outputs. You can also use these to record to tape and I believe you can also stream it through the Firewire for real-time video capture just like a Sony camcorder. It has composite and S-video and there's your DV input output and your USB in case you're using the SD card slot to take photos and an LANC jack and I think this thing is beeping at me telling me it's going to shut off and it just did. I was wondering what was making that beeping noise. I didn't know if it was this camera I'm using to record or the GL2. I guess it was the GL2 telling me it's going to shut off. It has an accessory shoe up here as well as some additional recording controls in case you're holding it from the top so you don't have to use the controls over on the side here and you open that and you get your tape playback controls and you can also do audio dubbing but I believe that's only if you record in 12-bit audio which gives you four audio channels while 16-bit audio only gives you two channels for stereo left and right and I did try using this external microphone but as you'll hear in my test clip when I had it mounted to the accessory shoe, it was picking up the hum from the vibration of the tape motor. So that didn't really work out that well. But the internal microphone sounds very good. So that's about it. Like I said, I'm still figuring out how to use all these different controls on it. So I'll just give you the test recordage I recorded so far using the Canon GL2. First test recording of the second Canon GL2. The replacement for the first one that didn't work. Optical image stabilization seems to be working. did not come with a battery, but I ordered one from eBay. 
So we shall see how this recording turns out. If it has any problems or if it works fine. That first test recording played back fine, although I noticed the time counter was pausing and then jumping ahead a couple times, so hopefully that will not be a problem. I don't know what was causing that. It played fine, but the counter was kind of screwing up during playback. Now I'll experiment with the auto and manual audio recording level controls. Right now, using the built-in microphone and automatic gain control, now I'll switch it to manual. This is manual gain control if the level's set about halfway. Now I'll try turning levels all the way up. That's all the way up on the left channel and all the way down on the right channel. Now all the way up on the right channel and all the way down on the left channel. Back to the middle for both. And now the maximum on both. Now back to middle on both. And now back to auto gain control. In those previous few clips I had my furnace running in the background so that's why you heard some background noise. Now I pretty much have things as quiet as they can possibly be in here so I'm gonna keep quiet for a little bit and listen for any tape noise on the recording. This is automatic gain control. It's checking for zoom motor noise. I'm monitoring this with headphones as I'm recording. The zoom noise is minimal so it seems to be fine. Now I switch to manual gain control, middle setting for both. And back to automatic. Now I have a Sony ECM MS908C camcorder microphone installed. Okay, let's see, is this working? Yes. I have to turn my levels all the way up. I'm using an external Sony microphone and it sounds like it's picking up a hum from the tape mechanism. Actually worse than the built-in microphone. Okay, I unmounted the microphone from the handle on the camcorder so that removed the noise. So, unfortunately, when the microphone is mounted on the handle it picks up the noise from the tape mechanism. Now back to the built-in microphone and automatic gain control. So this is not really working out that well. I have to turn the levels all the way up in order to hear anything with this. And then it picks up noise from the tape if I have it mounted on the handle. This is a low light test using the GL2. I'm using all of the factory default settings. The only thing I changed was to switch it into widescreen mode. Otherwise I didn't change the exposure or the shutter speed or anything like that. At least on the viewfinder it seems to be doing a pretty good job. And I didn't expect this to be really that great in low light because it's a 3 CCD camera. And those usually aren't that great in low light. But it looks like this one is doing a pretty good job of keeping the color saturation where it should be in low light instead of dulling out the colors. And also staying nice and sharp unlike quite a lot of cameras actually these days that in order to boost the gain in low light they do it electronically which means you lose a lot of the sharpness. But this seems like it's doing a very respectable job here. This camera does not have a built-in light or any kind of night vision but it does have an accessory shoe and Canon sold a video light for it, the VL-3 which is a 3 watt halogen spotlight which 
attaches to the accessory shoe and runs on the camera's battery power so the light does not need a separate battery by itself. So I will probably get one of those but for now this is just without any extra lighting. And here's trying out the manual shutter speeds. Right now it's at 1 over 60, 1 over 30 which would be equivalent to the auto slow shutter mode on a consumer grade camera. 1 over 15 and 1 over 8 which is as slow as it goes so you can see a lot of image trailing but that brings up the brightness the most. You can change the aperture too but it's already all the way open at 1.6 and the gain is all the way up as well so it's already maxed out here there's nothing more I can do to bring up the brightness besides slowing down the shutter speed. So now that I figured out how to do those manual controls, let's go to the slightly brighter scene again. And there's 1 over 30, 1 over 15, and 1 over 8, which looks very overexposed. So I'll go back to 1 over 30, and there's the aperture, 3.4 going up, and of course it's getting darker. Go back down to 1.6, and here's the gain at 0, at 6 dB, 12 dB, 18 dB, which is where it was. Here's the bag the camera came in. Looks like a book bag, but it's designed for the camera. camera goes in this middle part here and then you get these little compartments for various things like the battery dongle and your cables and your spare tapes and remote control. This is the remote control it came with. Don't know if it has batteries in it. Let me find out. Try zooming in. Well, looks like it has batteries but they're pretty much dead because it's just it's not doing it barely even doing anything so that will need new batteries came with this lens on it it's a UV protection filter let me test the focus here there we go that's pretty good focus and you get various compartments for all different things you get different zippered compartments And they, both the camera itself and this bag have letters and numbers painted on them. So I don't know if this was used by a school or some other kind of institution. I bought an aftermarket battery from eBay. So far it's working okay. Now I'm going to try using the external microphone jack with an attenuation cable to record a line level audio source from my computer. I have it set to manual audio level with the controls about halfway. I think that jack has a little bit of oxidation on it, which I still need to clean out, but otherwise it sounded pretty good. And finally, you can record color bars to the tape. The color bars are useful to separate different recording sessions on the tape, so you don't have to worry about overlapping one recording against the next. You can just record a few seconds of color bars to go between them. So that's about it for my indoor test footage using the Canon GL2. Professional grade 3CCD camcorder from 2002.